But the point is, I don't know if the actor is anything like that, because we all know they're nothing but pretend. But to see a movie that you don't have to be embarrassed to, like that filth that came out in the summer, train wreck, it's, it was a pleasure. Yes, but I, I'm making a different point, um, my friend Lou, which is that the propaganda war that's being waged against conservatives and against Republicans and against Christianity and against religion, except one religion, this propaganda war is what's killing us. It's what's weakened the nation. And we need to, we need to force Hollywood. We need to force them, force them to start turning out propaganda against the proper targets. I agree. I couldn't agree. That's all I'm saying. Now, let me send you a free copy of Government Zero. I have a sore throat right now. I, I, you know, sometimes I sang too much is what I did for those two hours. What he's referring to was the first 15 minutes of the first hour. I don't remember, remember it all. I'll have to capture it by MP3 and post it. My, th my throat is hoarse. It's the first day of the week. I shouldn't have put out so much, but it all came out of me. I, it's been a long weekend. Was I off on Friday? I was. Yeah, I was off on Friday. And I had a fill-in. It was per, you know, it was all good. But the thing is, is I was thinking for, th for three straight days, now four days, and looking at the news, and I see them making, making headway and making gains, and I see that we're getting weaker. I see the migrants flooding over into Europe. I see no one's challenging Hillary on her blowing up Libya and causing the crisis. I see that they're mocking not Bernie Sanders' insane Soviet-era economic policies, but his underwear. And then I put two and two together, and I say, i got to go on the air and tell the people all about this. That's why I did this. This is why my throat is hoarse right now. I didn't even get to, I didn't play any sound bites today. I took hardly any calls. Lou, thanks for those kind words. Now, Anthony on WABC in New York has a different point, and he's absolutely right in a way, and I want to discuss it about <clears throat> the entertainment industry helping us in this battle. He has a different take. Anthony, please make your point. Well, uh, thank you. What about Charlie Hebdo? And what about the Draw Mohammed contest? There's examples of people that were ridiculing Islam and ridiculing the Islamists, and I think they probably did. Well, here's the problem. They picked the wrong target. They did not have to go after Muhammad in order to ridicule, ridicule radical Islam. In order to caricature radical Islam, they didn't have to caricature the prophet himself, their prophet, let's put it that way. There was no need to go there. They chose the wrong target to ridicule, in my estimation. That doesn't mean they should have been killed for it, but what I'm saying is if you're going to caricature the enemy, caricature the enemy. Correct. Uh, they, they did choose the wrong target. I'll, I'll give you that point. Um, whatever you do, though, don't let up. Well, I, I'm way past that point. I've, I've gone through the needle. I, I'm through the eye of the needle. I'm on the other side of the eye of the needle. I don't know how else to put it. There's no going back, Anthony. You know, I almost feel like parroting Hillary Clinton, where she said, I've come too far. Remember that crazy speech of hers? Well, let me tell you, I've come too far to go back through that, the eye of that needle. I cannot go back through the eye of that needle. I cannot go back into the safety zone of radio. I can't go there. There's no way to get back there. I've lost my compass. There's no way back. I've come through the eye of the needle, and I'm walking alone, not exactly in the desert, but I'm telling you, I am wandering in the desert. I have zero support in the media. I am not a member of the Rush cartel. I am ridiculed on a daily basis. I'm ostracized on a daily basis. I'm uh, uh, excommunicated on a daily basis. None of them want to have anything to do with my message. And so I count to my listeners. It's me and my audience, period. As you will see next week, by the way, when my book is launched, even though it's going to be another big book, wait until you see who has me on their show and who doesn't. The answer is almost nobody will have me on their show. I'll tell you right now who will. Alex Jones will have me on his show. Laura Ingram will have me on her show. Maybe one other national figure will have me on their show because they, too, are not a member of the Rush Limbaugh cartel nor the Fox News Rush cartel. They are not a member of that very, very powerful group, nor am I. So I count on my audience. It's that simple. And we need to get the message out. It's that simple. But let's stick to the real issue. The real issue is to stop pretending that there's no war. The real issue is to stop pretending that you're all going to be safe for the rest of your life and that your child can sell lemonade on the corner and go to a good school and get have a good marriage and have a good life. 
Let's stop pretending those days are still here. They're not here. Happy days are not here again. We are living in such disastrous times. The wave has not yet hit us. Oh, we had the wave from Mexico last summer. Remember what Hussein did to us last summer? Oh, I don't know how it happened. When Hussein brought in trainloads of refugees from uh, mothers and children from Honduras, El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala. Remember that? Oh, I don't know how it happened. They just had to come here. Don't you remember what Hussein did? What was that called? A test run. Remember during the heyday of Islamic airplane terrorism, they would, we were getting reports of, what were they called, test runs? Where they would do certain crazy things on an airplane to, to test the, the security systems to see what they can get away with next. Remember that? Hussein did it last summer. He ran in hundreds, I don't know how many. What, I don't know how many came in. No one knows. Remember how many infected children and mothers were brought in and, and the epidemic that resulted? and that there are children crippled right now with polio-like viruses that are incurable. You don't know any of this. The CDC is a part and parcel of the same machine. They will not tell you about the uh, virus that was brought in and what it did. But Hussein did it, and he got away with it. There wasn't a peep in the media because we've been so bamboozled and beaten to death over we're a nation of immigrants, we have to be compassionate, they're just innocent mothers and children. How many of them are working? How many of these mamas and children are working? I thought the immigrants all come here to work. I thought the immigrants all come here to take the jobs, uh, jobs others won't take. How many of those young mothers from Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala are working right now? Certainly you don't want their children working. We don't believe in child labor, so they're not working. And then you need the mother at home to take care of the child, right? So they're not working. So who's taking care of them? You are my, my moronic friend. But they're not the problem right now. We have a bigger problem. It's the tsunami of Muslim men that are pouring into Europe that will soon be brought in to this nation by Hussein. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Combine all of what's going on, the push of refugees, whatever you want to call them, into America. The gun demands now. In California, they're pitching instant ammo background checks to take away your right to shoot the gun. They want you to have blanks. Put all of it together, and you'll understand the, the gangsters who are running things and what they're trying to do. You see, the gangsters are terrified of you because they know you know. See, they know the average liberal doesn't know what they're doing or agrees with them. But the gangsters who took over California and the gangsters who took over the federal government are terrified of those of you who own guns who know what they're doing and don't agree with them. So the gangsters don't want you, the people, to have any power whatsoever, whether it's at the voting booth, so they flood in illegal aliens, therefore diluting the value of your vote or nullifying it altogether. And now they have one thing that they want to take away from you is the chance for you to stand up against their tyranny. That's the gun. There's something that the Hollywood entertainment business would not understand because they all have private bodyguards who are armed to the teeth. And that's a complete package right there. So that's all. K, I can't read this. Oh, Casper on KBET. You're in Las Vegas, correct, Casper? Yes, I am, Dr. Savage. Go ahead, make your point, please. My point is, sir, on a subject you touched in the beginning of your... Uh show today, Lebanon. I'm a Lebanese-born Armenian. I witnessed firsthand what happened, what the Palestinians did to the land of the Phoenicians. My father became a political target uh, from Yasser Arafat. Oh, boy. Um, after the Six-Day War, they started flush coming into Lebanon, the Palestinians did. And uh, Camille Shamoun, the president at the time, was loading him in trucks and taking him back to the Syrian border. They built tunnels to come back into Lebanon. They brought arms with them, which led to the 11 years civil war in the land of the Phoenicians. Now you're talking about Muslims coming into the largely Maronite nation of Lebanon, aren't you, what I mentioned? Yes, sir. And how it, and how it destroyed the nation? It destroyed the nation, and it is still destroyed to this day. It'll never go, never go back to where it was. 
So that's exactly the model of what's going to happen in Europe. That's what I was trying to say. There's no difference. I'm sorry. How is it that I, how is it you and I know the history of Lebanon and can say it's directly comp comparable to what's going to happen to Europe and what will happen to America unless Hussein is blocked from bringing in Muslim refugees? How is it that we know this and they don't? Do you think they know what's going to happen or they don't know? They don't know what's going to happen. I know firsthand, sir, because uh, Arafat put a hit on my father. And my father was a personal bodyguard with Camus Shamoun, the president of Lebanon at the time. Do you, do you know that, that Yasser Arafat's widow left with tens of millions of dollars? Did you know that? Yes, I do. Yes, so I it's do. a gang. It's a gang. You understand it's a gang marching under the, under the directive of a religion. And that it, it intimidates all people who know what's going on under the guise of being this and that, racist. Same as here. Same as here. Stay in the line. Government zero to you. Last chance. End of the road. Last shot. Last shot. That's it. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7287. Savage. We're talking about the invasion of Europe by Muslims and the calculated plan to oversweep the West with Muslims, take it over, convert it to Sharia law, put women in burqas, mutilate young women, take over the military, make everyone bow to Mecca, make Christians pay a tax, God knows what will happen to the Jews. We know what will happen to the mockers. We know what will happen to those who mock those of us who are trying to warn you. We know what will happen. And we're talking about Hijra, H-I-J-R-A-H. -H. You can read all about it in Government Zero. You're going to hear about Government Zero all week this week. You're just going to hear about it. Get used to it. Get used to it. You're going to hear about it all week. It's the most important book of the year. I don't care what anyone else says. And so we'll go on of what Hijra is, what the strategy is, why Europe is being overrun right now by Muslims. Why are there so many young men, no women, no children? Who are they? They're not all from Syria. Many of them are from Bosnia. Some of them are from other nations. What are they doing? How did it happen that a nation with such a strong conservative backlash, Germany, suddenly gets overrun in the opposite direction? Who is Merkel? What do they have on her? How did Merkel become a dictator? Who gave her the power to be God Almighty? Who gave Obama the power to be God Almighty? Who? Who is empowering these evil people? And I will use that word until you hear me. Evil. Evil exists. Evil is a leader who does not respect the wishes of the people. The people have a right to their own national identity. The people have a right to secure borders. Just as we have a right to secure doors and windows in our houses. Who doesn't have a right to secure their own house? It's inherent in our Constitution. You have a right in the Bill of Rights to resist illegal search and seizure. The government has no right to break into your car without a warrant, to break into your house without a warrant. You're protected by that. So who gives Mexicans the right to break into your country? Who gives Muslims the right to break into Germany? Criminals. They may as well have a black mask over their face. Merkel may as well have a burglar's mask over her face with a tire iron breaking the windows of Germany, if I were a cartoonist. She's prying the, the hinges off the locks. Why? What do they have on her? Why is she doing it? Duh, don't confuse yourself. Please don't talk to me about the Holocaust again, and don't confuse yourself again. Stop with the humanitarianism. I'm sick of hearing about it. You're just weak. You're weak and you won't stand up for anything. The only thing you hate is this message. The only thing you hate is me. The only thing you hate are those of us who want borders, language, and culture. But you don't hate your real enemies. We're actually your best friends. We are the only ones who are warning America and trying to warn Europe as to what these burglars called leaders are doing to their own nation. Now, migrants are flooding into Europe. And the new, I, I mean, they painted a picture of Merkel, the leader of Germany, in a fascist uniform with her hand held high like Hitler, with a, with a uh, European symbol, an EU symbol on her hat. Because the EU is the new, uh, I wouldn't say Nazism, it's the new Soviet system, soft. The EU is soft Soviet. Do you all get that? EU, the European Union, is a soft Soviet, period.
And what is the grand strategy of the morons who run the European Union other than raping young children? What is the strategy of the 